is due to um, a connectivity between all things, um, that things are not necessarily as separate as they appear to be. I want to get your thoughts on the multiverse. Some scientists are now beginning to say that we have more than one universe. We have many. What do you think? Uh, I would agree with that. I would say that um, we are probably, probably embedded into a larger universe, which is embedded into a larger one and so on. And I believe, uh, based on the fractal nature of my theory, that those embeddedness uh, go to infinity, from infinitely big or to infinitely small, which was basically the concept that struck me when I was 10 years old in that bus, is that you can divide to infinity or you, know, or you can go infinitely large if you want to, but that um, each boundary is embedded into a larger one, into a larger one, so that you can't actually separate anything from anything else. Would you think that these universes are all the same, or might they, they have different life forms that are totally different than what we can even comprehend? I would say that they most likely have similar um, um, properties. Uh, however, they might be different uh, to us. I'll, I'll explain that. Let, let's, say you, let's say you were an atom. And, um, you know, the, first of all, let me make clear that when I'm thinking of multiverses, I'm not thinking of universes that are separate from us, but that our universe is embedded into a larger one and a larger one and a larger one. Like, so, like bubbles stuck together? Exactly, like bubbles within each other. Okay. And so if, now imagine that I shrunk you, um, or let's say that you were an atom, and, or even a cell, a biological cell, and, and, uh, and you observe the, the universe from that perspective, from, from that perspective, from that, you know, level of scale. Um, you know, your, your, your universe, your space would look quite different. You know, it wouldn't look anything like what you're experiencing today. Um, but, you know, then if I grew you to the size of a human being and then you looked around, you would think you probably changed dimensions. Well, you actually literally changed dimensions in size, you know. But, um, but you would think you probably went to another universe or something. Um, but actually all you've done is observe things from a different perspective. So another universe, uh, a much larger than universe than the one we're in, might look quite different, but uh, may, maybe it would be just different because um, it would be at a different scale. We would look at a different perspective on the same thing. Good point. And, and I have to applaud you for your your thought i mean you get it there there aren't a lot of people who have put this together the way you have and i know we've only scratched it just this first hour more thank to come you. but you get it and uh, it's refreshing oh thank you well you know i think more and more people get it i i was amazed at um you know the quality and the um the depth of thought that uh, that's emerging in the scientific world in the physics conferences I, at, I attend and and so on it's really remarkable I, I, I think we're really go undergoing a transformation at this time it's very exciting yeah it, it sure is and we're going to talk about the uh, resonance project when we come back uh, do you travel much now still you're in France I know you go to the United States a lot where are you based primarily now I'm based in Hawaii, on Kauai. Oh, are you? Sure. I've got a lot of friends on the Big Island. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, uh, it's a beautiful place to be. And uh, I, uh, I'm traveling right now, you're correct. I'm talking from uh, La Côte d'Azur near Nice in France. And I've been touring for almost uh, three months now. And, um, yeah, a lot of interest out there. And there's a lot of great thinking that's going on. It's really remarkable. Get down to Monaco and say hi to Prince Albert for me. You know what's fun? <laughs> I don't know if they'll have me. <laughs> <laughs> of course they will. With your mind, of course they will. You know, you're, you're like the new Albert Einstein or the, the new Carl Sagan. Did you know that? 
Thank you. Yes, those are, it's a great honor to be associated with these people. Thank you. I appreciate Well, when we come back, we'll talk about this project, the Resonance Project, and what it means, and also how consciousness, again, ties into your theories. It is truly remarkable. Crossing the event horizon, rise to the equation. That's his DVD set. Fascinating. Fascinating. I'll be back. Now, Sam, if consciousness is a vital part to all of this, that almost tells me that this universe is almost like a living, breathing thing all to itself. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, like, certainly if you look at our planet, there's a lot of living, breathing things on it. And, you know, we don't really have a theory on how that really uh, fundamentally occurred. And... Um, but I, I'd like to I'd like to put a little nuances on, right. on, on this statement because when you say a conscious universe, if you don't define consciousness, it doesn't really tell me anything about the universe neither. And you know, and because it's like, what is consciousness? How does it occur? What, you know, what is the functioning of it? And and why does it occur? And so uh, this this is um, this is where my work led me eventually is to you know as I was working the forces uh, of nature, working out how um, nature produces gravitational fields and uh, electromagnetic fields and so on. Um, and as I wrote papers uh, describing these things and and I I figured out some of the topology necessary that is what the geometry necessary for this to occur I realized that there's a there's a fundamental feedback of information between the gravitational field which is information moving in and the electromagnetic field which is information moving out and be, and when you have a feedback like this, now you have a basis for self-awareness. You know, consciousness is being self-aware. In order to be self-aware, you need feedback. And that just happens to be the fundamental way fractal equations are written. A fractal equation is an equation in which you take the result of it, you feed it back and you get another iteration which is take the answer and feed it back and so on and you get this infinite amount of complexity out of a very, very, very simple set of rules. And so it's, nice, it's a nice way to start to describe nature because that's what you see in nature. And you see fractals everywhere in nature when you look around, uh, for instance, the way the branches of a tree divides, the way the roots of a tree go into the ground, the way your nervous system divides, the way your, um, you know, your veins and arteries, and all. you can see it everywhere. And so, you know, to me, then it became clear that it must be fundamental to the way the universe functions. And now when you start to think of it that way, now you have the basis, the mechanics of consciousness and you realize that it's not individualized to a human being, but it is a fundamental functioning of the structure of nature, and that the end result is this human being looking back at itself, going, what am I, and what is this universe? Does that make sense? Yes, and if you can understand that, I think you can use that in your day-to-day -day living and begin to do some incredible things with this. It, it's almost like a gift. That's right. It, 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 uh, first of all, it takes, it takes all away the dogmas, and, and then you start to realize that you are interacting with the universe. Um, you know, one of the f early realization I had, I think I was more in my uh, around 15 or 16, when I realized that the atoms are made out of 99.99999% space. And so I realized that our world is actually, you know, mostly space. And that, this, that what we call 
the real world, like the material world, is actually point zero 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 one of a percent of what's <laughs> actually there. And, you know, we always think of the material world defining the space. And I start to reverse that concept and think maybe it's the space that produced the material world. Maybe space is not empty. Maybe space is full. And when it divides itself, when it makes a boundary, we see it as something. Uh, we say it's a planet, it's a star, or we say it's an atom or a subatomic particle. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a good theory on your part, and to me, more scientists need to begin to think that way. 